In many instances, though, we can't distinguish between the different ordered samples. If you were to look up the results of the lottery 649 draw in the newspaper, it doesn't tell you in which order the balls were drawn. It just tells you what the six balls that were drawn were. Like if you see the six balls that were drawn were balls numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, it could mean that the first drawn ball was number one, second one was two, and so forth. But it could be that the first ball that was drawn was number four, and the second one was number three, or literally any other combination you can think of. So this number of unordered samples of size R from a set of size N, we will denote it by NCR. So the C stands for combination, and we'd say something like N choose R to talk about it. We don't yet know what that number is matching. You can derive it by no, uh, noticing that there's two processes here which give you the same result. So you're going to start by taking an ordered sample of size R. And there's NPR ways to do this. That's what we've seen in the previous bit. And then we will take, instead of that, an unordered sample of size R. There's going to be NCR ways to do this. And that's the number we're trying to find. We don't know what that number should be. And then we will rearrange, we'll permute the objects in the samples. Each sample that you've drawn. There's R factorial ways to do this. For instance, what I mean is, let's say that you had drawn at some point three, two, four. Well, how many different ways are there to rearrange this? You could have three, two, four, three, four, two. You could have two, three, four, two, four, three. You could have four, two, three, four, three, two. And that's it though. There's no other way to be doing that. So if you're working here, with a sample of size R, the number of options will be R factorial. If you work with a sample of size 3, you will have 3 factorial options. Why 3 factorial? Well, look, there's one choice for the first entry, one choice out of R, well, that's R choices. Then for the second entry, well, you can't repeat the one you had before. So there's going to be one fewer choices than the one you started with. R minus 1 and R minus 2 and all the way down to why your last choice, there's only last stage, there's only one choice left open to you. So what this is telling us is that if the order matters, you know how to compute that. You use NPR. If the order doesn't matter, does NCR ways of doing, of picking the actual R objects in your sample? And then there's R factorial ways of permuting the thing so that you get different orders. These two things are equivalent, so what this is telling us is that the number of um, permutations in PR should be equal to the number of combinations times R factorial, and you can solve for NCR. You will get that it is going to be NPR divided by R factorial. We know what NPR is. It is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial divided by R factorial. And this new expression here, we often write it using this, a binomial coefficient. We call that n choose r. And that's usually the notation that is used in textbooks. So whenever you see n choose r, what looks to be like a fraction but without a dividing line here, you'll remember that this stands for n factorial divided by n minus r factorial divided by r factorial. So now, how many ways are there to report the results of Lotto 649 in the newspaper? 
and you always report them in increasing order. So what you're saying here is that you do not care about the order in which they were drawn. That number is going to be the same as the number of unordered samples of size 6. How many different reorderings of, same, uh, of the same six numbers do you have? Well, they're all indistinguishable, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, if it's drawn in that order, will be reported the same way that five, four, three, two, one, six would be. They'll both be reported as one, two, three, four, five, six. So you are looking at this computation. Forty nine choose six. If you try to compute it directly, you're going to have a problem. But you can see this would be forty nine factorial divided by forty nine minus six factorial times six factorial. And we know how to compute 49 factorial divided by 49 minus 6 factorial. We've done this before. It's just the product of the integers between 49 and 44. And you divide that by 6 factorial. And you'll get a total number of about 14 million possibilities. So what this is saying is that whenever you purchase a Lotto 649 ticket, when you pick six numbers at random, you have, roughly speaking, one chance out of 14 million to have picked the right six digits. There are various identities that exist to allow you to find the um, the values of these binomial coefficients. One of the very easiest way for you to compute these things is through something called Pascal's triangle. You start with a 1 in the first row. Then you will start with a 1 in two different locations. So your first entry and your last entry are always going to be equal to 1 and the entry at any other location is given by the sum of the two entries above it in the triangle. One plus one is two. So for your next row, you would have one and one. That doesn't change. And then you look at sum of 1 plus 2 and the sum of 2 plus 1. So forth. So you can build this. This is literally going to be how you compute and choose R. This corresponds, the first row corresponds to n equals 0, the second one to n equals 1, the third one to n equals 2, and so forth. And the rth entry, well, this corresponds to r equals to 0, r equals 1, so this is r equals 0, this is r equals 1, r equals 2, and so forth. What this tells you is that the binomial coefficient for any entry is the sum of two entries from one line above it's basically the one on the left plus the one on the right And there's also a fair amount of symmetry in here. So 
for instance, how many ways are there to choose no items from a bag of N items, there's only one way to do so. And that's the same as the number of ways to pick all of the items from a bag of items. Similarly, you'll see that the number of ways to pick one item from a bag of N items, N is the same as the number of ways to pick n minus one items from a bag of n items because this is basically saying that you want to find the ways not to pick an item from a list of n items. In general, n choose r will be the same as n choose n minus r.